Christmas has this magic about it. There's something about this play that transcends a specific time and place. It's a really thrilling story to put on stage. It's a world premiere, so it's nice to get a new exciting take on it. The Dickens tale captures what Christmas is truly about. The Christmas Carol people will never have seen. It's a world premiere. Because you say it's a Christmas Carol, you think, oh, I've seen that. But it is a world premiere, which is a big deal. And, um, you know, you're taking a script that's never been done before and trying to bring it to life. I've always wanted to direct A Christmas Carol. I'd never been wild about the adaptations that are out there. I, you know, I love the story, so it was great to see a, such an interesting theatrical rendition of the story. The great thing about it is there's one actor plays Scrooge, and then the other four actors play everybody else. And, you know, you just, how do you make that world happen around him? Part of what we're trying to do with this show is find different ways of telling the story, different ways of performing the characters. And one of the ways we do that is with mask work. Um, for example, uh, my, my version of Jacob Marley. Ebenezer! I am here to warn thee of the fate that awaits thee. That's the biggest difference that people who come to see the show will, will notice, is that there's only five of us on stage, plus a puppet. And it's, it's a great challenge for, for us, the actors, to, to have to embody and become believable as many different characters so people don't get confused. So, so the work is on us to really make all of our characters clear and, uh, and the storytelling clear, which is something that Joe is top-notch at. We're playing instruments as well as singing, and there's a lot of dialect work as we switch from character to character. And it's, it's awesome because I really like the kind of theater that is developed, really developed in the rehearsal process. I'm already feeling immensely proud of this, <laughs> and I'm very excited for once it's, it's up and running. I'm just crazy about Tiny Tim already. I've only known him a couple days. I don't want to spoil anything, but he is not human. And we all manipulate him, and he is darling. And it's kind of uh, amazing how a piece of wood can evoke such emotion. All of us are staring at him. He's got these big eyes that just look up at you, and he's real. He's a real person and uh, I think the audience is going to want a lot more Tiny Tim. Well, you know, any story of redemption is powerful and I think everyone hopes it exists and that someone can look back on their life and learn from it. Do you not wonder that I hate it? I do not wonder at all, sir. The almighty dollar does not rule. And that takes a while for Scrooge to learn that lesson. I guess that's why it's such an iconic story, because everybody knows of Scrooge. In this particular uh, adaptation of the play, too, he's much more defiant. He, he takes longer to thaw, if you will. He holds on to that defiance a lot longer, which creates more conflict, I think, for the play, which is, which is going to give it a kind of driving piston, in a way, that others may lack. My name is Mark Lightor. I'm Andrew Long. I'm Jesse Shelton. I am Steve Pasek. I'm Tina Stafford. I'm Joe Calarco. Please come see the world premiere of Patrick Barlow's adaptation of Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol at Delaware Theatre Company. Happy holidays. Bah humbug.